Hi guys. So I thought I'd share my first swap that I've done with someone. Um, her name is, uh, I'm not sure how it's pronounced exactly, but it's Peugeot, P-I-R-J-O. And she has a channel here on YouTube um, called Peugeot Blues. And uh, she makes really beautiful journals. Um, she made this amazing reversible journal. Um, I'll put the link to her channel in the description box below and head over to her and pay her a visit. And she also has these awesome uh, flea market hauls that um, she comes across the best stuff. Anyway, um, we, we went into a swap. Well, she contacted me and uh, we um, decided to do a swap of a loaded paper bag or envelope. And I've never made one of those before and <laughs> I wasn't really sure what was involved and I did look up some videos on YouTube and from what I can gather it's um, just a little envelope or paper bag full of little um, junk journal goodies that you can use um, in your journals or embellishments and the only thing is, I really struggled with this. Um, I don't know why. It's just a paper bag or an envelope with some goodies in it. I don't know why, but I think it's because when I go into something like a swap or somebody specifically requests something to be made for them, um, I don't know why, but I procrastinate and I think it's not good enough and I really end up... Um, I don't know. I have a really hard time with it. <laughs> and I probably ditch it and start it again over and over. And I just think it's not good enough. But anyway, um, I just I decided to just knuckle down and do it. And this is a little late now. Um, I've already got her parcel, um, which I will open tomorrow. I want to send this first and then I'll open her parcel tomorrow and I'll do a video um of what she sent me and <laughs> to be honest I'm a little terrified because I I love her work she she does amazing work and I feel like whatever I send her um is never going to um you know <laughs> I don't know I feel like it won't be good enough anyway um anyway this is what I've come up with and I know this is not your traditional um, loaded envelope or paper bag. I I ditched my original two that I started. I just wasn't happy with them. And this is my version of a loaded envelope. So it's kind of like a loaded envelope or envelopes. Um, I think I've used four of, of, of how many? Three four four large envelopes and I've kind of put them into a book so I suppose it ended up a flowish loaded envelope journal anyway I hope she likes it so I'll give you a quick look um, this the cover is made out of an Australia Post um, large envelope which you'll see when I open it and I've covered it with some fabric and I've put a pocket here off um, this was an old tablecloth and just some pretty lace and a few buttons I've put a pocket here and um, she's actually from Germany and this is um, German so not sure what it says but I just thought it looked old and cute it's actually out of a stamp catalogue and I backed it onto some coffee dyed paper just to make a little journal card okay um, I didn't originally have a closure but then it got so fat because of the stuff I put in it that I ended up pulling the fabric up a little 
and gluing down um, some ribbon to make a closure so I hope it's secure enough I, I did bring it down to about here but I couldn't stitch it because it's an envelope and I had already uh, put it together but anyway I think it'll hold so what I really wanted to do is keep it looking like an envelope so these are the envelopes that I've used they're Australia Post registered envelopes and um, inside they've got this pretty red pink pattern it, it says registered post but if you chop them up and coffee dye them they actually come up really nice so what I've done is I've put something in each pocket at each end of the envelope and something on the pages and what I really wanted is for this um, loaded envelope flow journal <laughs> um, <laughs> to represent kind of who I am and a little bit of um, my style, I suppose. So my style is junky, so I really wanted it to um, keep that envelope look. I wanted it to look like it's an envelope because it is anyway so okay I'll start on blabbing in the first pocket I've just put a little butterfly card I made and I've just written her a little note and I've shown these before these are just some little um cards that I've made um, sometimes write little thank you notes and that for orders and that this is just a napkin um, my husband's old tie that I cut up and he didn't realize for months and just some uh, painted music paper stitched around so they're in the first pocket this is a coffee dyed candy bag because I use those all the time Put a strip of old film um, I'm not sure what's on it it looks like people but um, they're really cute in embellishments I've put a Qantas tag and this is a an actual real Qantas luggage tag it's really old it belonged to my grandmother um, when she went back to Italy in the 80s um, early 80s actually probably mid 80s so it, it is um it is vintage now and um, you know, Qantas is one of those things when we think of um, Qantas, we think of Australia. Okay, so I've put some little floral playing cards um, just because I love them and they're so cute. <laughs> I found those in an op shop not long ago. This is just a pocket made out of some um, scraps of a painted envelope that I was using for something else. Um, this is a, an actual little petty cash voucher. It's discolored because it is actually um, quite old. It's in pounds um, and that indicates that it's prior to the prior to 1966 because uh, that's when we went from Imperial to metric in Australia. My husband found a little petty cash voucher brochure in an old file at work. Um, sorry, not brochure, a uh, booklet. And there's not many left in it and he knew that um, I just love old papers and they don't use these anymore at work so he brought it home for me I just really love old papers so I put that in there in this pocket um, I've put on this side I've put a first day cover um, and this is not a damaged one so this is a um, you know worthy for a collector and I've put this particular one it's from the 23rd of January 1987 and I've put that in there just because it has Australian made and advanced Australia on there because I, I really wanted it to represent you know Australia and on the other side I've just put a few Australian bird stamps in there um, so I really love birds and um, 
I think this series of stamps was one of the best that Australia Post have put out in a long time. They're really gorgeous. On this side, okay, this might seem weird, but I've put in um, a little folder from our um, train, our transport system. So this is actually a little train ticket that we no longer use. Um, we've replaced these paper tickets with these little uh, swipe like tap and go cards now like a credit card so you can't get these anymore and now <laughs> we used to throw these away all the time now i wish i had kept all of them you know you always think that um they'll be around forever and then something changes and then all of a sudden you're like oh you'll never see these again and so this is a little booklet that is available at our um train stations and this is a map that shows the whole train system. And I know if you're in Australia, that's like, eh, that's boring. Who wants that? But I know when I went to um, London and to Hungary a few years ago that I really liked, um, while I was there collecting, um, you know, their brochures and everything, because it's, it's really interesting from, from a different country. And I love seeing, you know, all the similar train station names um, they had in in London that, you know, we had here in Australia. Um, this page, I've just put a few little Australian odd pods. So put this bookmark with a cockatoo. And that's because we get these in our backyard all the time and... Um, they're very loud and demanding and noisy and they, you know, call out on the back fence until you go out and feed them. And I hand feed about 20 cockatoos almost every day. They line up on the fence and I just walk back and forwards along the fence feeding them by hand. And they're so common here. Um, my friends in America, in Idaho, he loves them. He thinks they're so exotic, but here in Australia, they're just so common. Um, here I've put, if you're in Australia, you might recognize these from a long time ago. This is also, um, vintage now. These were, um, the easy call phone cards. Our public phone booths used to have little prepaid, uh, cards that you could put in to make calls. Um, they don't have them now, um. I don't think they do anyway. Actually, you're hard-pressed even finding a public phone these days unless you're at a train station. But um, this was one of them. And I, my mother had collected a whole bunch of these. And so I've got quite a few. And I thought I'd pop this one in because, um, you know, who represents Australia um, the best? <laughs> you know, koalas and kangaroos. And I don't drink tea or coffee. But um, my son, um, before he moved out of home, did. And so did my daughter. So this was just an Australian tea. And I've popped that in because it's got Australian afternoon and some little kangaroos there. And I just thought it was really cute. You can make a little pocket with that in a journal. In this pocket, <laughs> I've put a collection of um, little bags that are... Um, you know, you see in Australia, um, or that I've used, well, I haven't used these, but I would have used over the years. So this is just a coffee dyed candy bag and I love these. I put them in journals and I put little things in to send in orders. So that, um, this is a Chico roll bag and all Aussies will know this, um, I don't know how to explain them. Uh, you can look them up online. I suppose they're kind of like a spring roll, but maybe a bit more. The the outside is a bit thicker. I don't know, but um, these are Australian classic. Uh, they bring back great memories growing up in Australia. And corn jacks. So um, these are 
long things like spring rolls as well, except they're filled with corn and um, they're the best. So these haven't been used, they're clean. Um, but I thought they are like unique little glassine bag type things for your journals. And these. Um, these are mushroom bags from one of our supermarkets here in Australia. They have since, well, the supermarkets around where I live, they've since got rid of these, probably because they were sick of junk journalers um, swiping them. <laughs> so whenever you bought loose mushrooms, you would pop them in these bags. And now they've replaced them with plain brown paper bags. So um, I had a few of these and another lady sent me one in a rack not too long ago. Um, so these are like treasured items now because you can't uh, swipe them at the supermarket anymore. So I just thought that was a cute little collection of baggies. Okay, this page, whoops, everything's gone askew. This page I've just put some netting down. Um, this is butcher's netting, I think. Um, you might have seen it in a previous video uh, for a uh, challenge with uh, Wendy Mason. And I've just pinned on a few of my handmade flowers. So this is just a little piece of a, a vintage doily. It had a hole in it and um, it was a shame because it was really, really cute. And I've cut all the uh, outside of the doily out and I've used it in journals and this was a little bit left in the middle so I've just made a little grungy flower and this is my style of flower that I love like I really love little grungy type things um, and I've put a button in there um, I just pulled the metal shank off the back it was from a wedding dress that I chopped up and I've pinned it there so you can take it off easy and use it this was an old blouse of mine <laughs> that um, I chopped up and I was just experimenting, um, melting different fabrics um, just to see how they come up. But this particular fabric came up quite nice and I'll just put a little gem in the middle. And this was some of the leftover fabric from uh, wedding dresses. When I cut them up, I... Um, always end up with a whole bunch of wedding dress and tulle and satin and that left over and um, I coffee dye some and I make flowers out of the rest and that's just a little bit off the strap on the back um, and it, it's got a little bit of a silver shimmer in it so these roses um, I did find them on YouTube but I, I can't remember the channel name it was a long long time ago um but she made really really beautiful flowers and mine um i like them but they don't seem to work out as nice as um you know when you see them made by other people these are some little paper flowers these guys are glued on but um i've only put a teeny little dot of glue so you can probably just pluck it off this is a little bit of trim out of a vintage wedding dress and I've pinned that on so you can take it off. Um, this was a little brooch off a um, wedding dress as well. It's really, really pretty. It's really shiny. Um, sorry, it's really dark in my room, so I can't... I don't know if you can see that on camera, but um, it's metal and it's um, a little heavy. But I've pulled the um, back pin and everything off so that you can glue it down onto a journal use it as um, an embellishment um, now it's nice and flat and I've just pinned that on as well so you can take it off and that's a little um, applique that was off a wedding dress I think it came off the same dress as that one and you can pull all this netting off and use that as well okay in this pocket I've put some coffee dyed wedding dress. It has an applique. I don't want to unfold it because um, it was hard to kind of fold and get in that pocket. I want to keep it flat. Okay, now 
Um, this may seem stupid if, if you're in Australia because we see them all the time again, like the, um, the, the train station brochure. But again, I think if you're overseas, um, ephemera from another country is always so much more interesting than your own. So these, um, as I was passing the post office, I thought, oh, that would be really fun to put in a junk journal. Um, I didn't coffee dye these ones, but um, I'm thinking I might coffee dye some and see how they turn out. So these are just different types of lotto playing. Um, lotto, lottery, you know, different types. And I thought they would be fun in a junk journal for someone else in another country. Probably not so much fun if you're in Australia. Maybe. This is a cushion cover um, that I cut up. The other part I've made a journal cover out of um, a year or two ago. That was a part of the leftovers. It's kind of like that tapestry type material. In this pocket, I've just put some of our regular banking envelopes. Because again, when I was uh, overseas, I really loved you know, all their banking papers and all that sort of stuff. So this is one from our bank. It's a National Australia. It's actually an envelope. It's got a deposit slip there. You fill it in, rip that off. And if you're banking any checks, you put it in the envelope and there's a, you know, quick box that you can leave it in in the bank so you don't have to line up. This is the same for another bank of ours, Commonwealth Bank. Or... Uh, this is a Westpac deposit slip. I don't think they have deposits or withdrawal slips anymore. They've done away with them. It's all um, electronic. This one, these were quite old. These were from my grandmother's um, place. She had a whole bunch of them. I used to actually work at Westpac many, many years ago. And um, I know this one is really old because that was from like the uh, late 80s. Just a Commonwealth deposit slip. And that's an actual check. I uh, found a book of them somewhere. And I've just cancelled on them. I'm sure the account's closed. They wouldn't just throw it out. But again, I thought those would be fun little bits of um, ephemera to put in journals if you're overseas. Oops. That little fold is getting caught. Let me put it the other way. Ah, I don't know what it's getting caught on. There it is. I'll put that in later. Okay, in this pocket, I've just put an old, um, it's like a doily. I won't unfold it because I don't want to try and fit it back in, but it's just got roses on it and it's gold and black. So you can chop that apart, use it in your journals. Uh, this side, this is actually an envelope and it's to Germany. <laughs> so this is from a stamp auction catalogue that my father gets. And I just thought it funny because he gets that sent from Germany. So this little envelope has been from Germany to Australia and is now going back home to Germany. And I've just popped some of these little envelope, little mini heart envelopes that I make out of scrap papers in there. Um, you probably saw a little video I just did recently. They're just little cute scraps that... um. I don't want to throw out, so I make little envelopes to pop in junk journals. And I've put those in there because I'm forever using scraps, and that's kind of who I am. Um, here I've put some little coin tags, just because I thought it would be cute for you to see some Australian coins. And these are no longer in circulation. One and two cent coins. Um, sorry, Persia, I don't know what year you were born, <laughs> but um, 
I just picked two at random, 66 and 70. Um, I'm not sure how old you are. You sound young on your videos. But um, I thought maybe you know someone, um, you know, maybe born in those years that you could always put into a journal or use as a little gift tag for them. In this pocket, I've just put some wallpaper, um, just some floral wallpapers because I thought they were so pretty. So that one. This one's uh, got a silver shimmer. I don't know if you can see on camera. And I did want to put some more wallpaper in there because I do have a lot. But um, the journal is at the just on the border of the weight category. Um, and I don't want to push it over. Okay, on this page, <laughs> if you're in Australia, you recognise this. This is um, some deli paper from Coles Supermarket here in Australia. And I um, always save it because it's just awesome for junk journals. Like, look at that. It's, it's like scrapbook paper. I love it. On this page I've put um, just some ribbon there, kind of like a little, to use as a hanger, of some little beads and stuff I've made. So I won't pull them off, but I'll bring it up a bit closer. This one is a boho bead. And I've made this, inside that is the lining of, sorry, not the lining, the tubing you know, from spray bottles. Um, this one's quite thin, but, um, you know, thicker bottles from, you know, Windex or something like that. Um, actually, I do have a video on those. I'll, I'll pop the link in the description box below if you want to take a look. But they're really easy to make. Um, so I've made a boho bead. This is just like a little charm or tile that I've made. I found some really pretty little um, logos. I think they were for an English soccer team um, in an old book. And so I cut them all up and I've put them onto some cardboard, some old food packaging cardboard, put some um, book page on the back, just a little bit of paint. And I've put some diamond glaze over top. So that's like really hard and glass like and they make really cute little tiles um, that's a vintage wooden button I love that button and just a little pin with some beads um, that I always clip these onto little fabric tabs in journals and stuff they look really cute um, in this pocket I've just put um, I've got a boho bead there, so I thought I'll put in one of my boho fabric swatches. And these are all just little fabric scraps that, um, you know, I use as tuck spots or pockets. And just a little boho fabric heart. This is just all little bitty scraps sewn onto some paper with some... I'm not sure what it's called you know like sheer curtain uh, material on top on this side you've probably seen that I have um, heaps of scraps of blue fabric uh, laying around on my desk because um, I made a blue fabric journal a few months ago and had a few scraps and I've been making a few blue fabric um, scrap fabric journal covers and so I thought I'd put a few of those to kind of you know represent what I'm doing this week <clears throat> sorry excuse me so this is actually vintage lace and this was off my old pair of jeans around the um, they were three quarter jeans and around the bottom it had these pretty little um, I don't know what they are, whatever those little 
faux gemza in all different colours. Um, the jeans don't fit me anymore, so I thought I'll chop them up instead of leaving them on the skinny side of the wardrobe forever. And, and that's some you know, that pretty blue shimmer fabric that belonged to my grandmother. And a little bird. These little guys are everywhere in my backyard. So I've only um, put a teeny little bit of glue and I've used a glue that isn't really a fabric glue. So you can just rip these little swatches off and use them in your journals. So none of them are fully stuck down. And in the last pocket, I've just put a few papers that um, I really love. So I use stamp catalogues all the time from my father and I back them onto coffee dye paper and I use them as pockets and journal cards and everything in journals. And I just, I just love them. They, they're, they're all um, very old looking and they got beautiful writing and some are postcards, some are envelopes, some are stamps, some are old documents, but they're all really gorgeous. So this one was 9th of March, 1956. Oh no. Sorry, 2nd of March, 1856 it looks like. Yeah, look at the writing, 1856. But imagine having the original of that. Oh my gosh. So I've put one of those in. Um, this is a very old shorthand book. And all this ageing on there, that's like natural discoloration. So I popped one of those in there because I really love this. I've never come across another one in an op shop. Um, so I'm a bit stingy with this paper for some reason. I don't want to use it all up. But um, not a lot of people have seen this, so I thought I'd give you one of those. And this is a children's book that I absolutely love. Um, I found it, um, an op shop was throwing it out because it was really badly damaged. The spine was off and pages were missing and um, the cover was torn. But it's it's got the most beautiful little images. And I love using that. So I've put a page of that in there as well. Okay. And the back I've just left the plain fabric. Anyway, that's my attempt at a loaded envelope. Um, I really hope you like it. Um, I hope it's fun for you to go through. And... When you get it, you'll probably be wondering what on earth is this, but um, I will let you know that I've posted a video so um, you can have a look through and understand uh, a few of the things and where I was coming from. But um, thank you for your patience so doing this and it's one of the reasons I don't go into swaps because I'm um, never satisfied um, with what I make. I always feel it could be better and... Um, yeah, I just, I don't know why I struggled so much, but thank you so much for your patience and apologies to everyone else if I don't go in swaps. Um, I, I'm very good with my Etsy shop and I, I'm very good with um, doing things that I need to do. I get everything done straight away. I'm actually a little bit of a perfectionist. Um, so it kills me to send out a swap late. Um but yeah, I, I just can't, <laughs> I don't know, I just can't, um, I can't do swaps, I don't know. Um, anyway, this was my first, but I am glad that I, I did go into a swap with you, Persho, because it maybe um, ironed out some of those, I don't know, little doubts that I have about making something for someone specifically. You know, it would be different if I put something in my Etsy shop because I think, oh, well, if you don't like it, you won't buy it. If you like it, you'll buy it. But, you know, when you send something to somebody um, sight unseen, I always have that doubt whether they'll like it or not. But anyway, I do like how it turned out in the end. I love that it's full of little bits here and there and it's chunky and um, I hope you enjoy it. And pull it apart and use all the little bits. And if there's anything else um, you need, you know where to find me. And thank you so much again for your patience. I, I really, really appreciate it. 
and I will open your package tomorrow and then I'll post uh, both of the videos once um, you receive this and open it. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.